Okay. And I just want to make sure everybody heard right. that you yes. would like do imaging before and after supplements to prove that the supplements were working. Is that what you just said? Cause that's incredible. That is exactly what I said. And wow. as somebody who I used to be, and it's probably because I'm, I'm a scientist. So you're skeptical of everything until you're proven wrong with objective science and objective data. Yeah. I mean, we've published peer reviewed papers in the literature doing randomized control trials using nutritional supplements and dietary lifestyle only to show measurable changes in the brain, both using SPECT imaging, and we've also seen it with the QEEG, using supplements alone, which wow. is extraordinary. And, you know, having worked at the Amen Clinics, one of the things that we use, the brain SPECT imaging, tells us about cerebral perfusion in the brain. And, you know, I helped Dr. Eamon build his massive brain spec database. It now is over 200,000 scans. So we've seen an extraordinary number of brain images. And most people have very low blood flow to the brain. How do we use nutritional supplements? Like, how do we use the most natural things possible to help improve brain function? We know we've got the medications. Some of the medications have side effects. So our patient population really gravitated toward supplement. I know in your book, Biohack the Brain, How to Boost Cognitive Health, Performance, and Power, you've got some supplement recommendations in there. I would love to hear your take on what you think is most important for the brain uh, to help the brain heal. Here's sort of the top six that I think are the basics that anybody over the age of 40 should be doing. And I say over the age of 40, because um, the brain starts shrinking, getting smaller, right? We start to see those brain changes at 40. If you wanna start before, I'm very excited for you. Like I would love that. Um, but the first is a foundational multivitamin. I think most people are not eating a well-balanced nutritional diet, having two servings of uh, fruits per day and three to five servings of vegetables. So let's get the foundational multivitamin in to help produce neurotransmitters, trace minerals. I'm also a big fan of trace minerals because that helps with the hormones and the enzymes. So again, those two together will help provide okay. the critical vital nutrients for brain function. Okay. And, and everybody listening or watching, go grab your pen yeah. or pencil. I want you to write this down. We've got multivitamin and multimineral so far. Yes. And are you talking about minerals like magnesium, sodium, potassium, or are you really just talking about the trace minerals? The trace minerals. So you could More do trace. a liquid okay. trace minerals formula. So you've got, got it. so the ones you're talking about would be in the foundational multi, got and then it. you can okay. add the trace minerals just as a liquid formulation. Okay. And again, the two together, I think of just complementary to help your brain produce neurotransmitters, hormones, enzymes, right? The basic building blocks for your brain. Mm -hmm. And then we get into one of your favorites, omega-3 fatty acids. Which, Yay! Oh, good. I'm so glad that's on the list. <laughs> it is so on the list. I know you love it for headaches as an anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And we love it in the world of psychiatry. So anybody who has a psychiatric issue, anxiety, depression, any mood issue, you need to be on an omega-3 fatty acid. Um, because that does help improve mood issues. Um, again, great anti-inflammatory, keeps the blood thin, which we love. That's great for cardiovascular and neurological health. Build cell membranes is needed for neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. So if we're gonna help keep growing brain volume as we age, we need one to two grams of a good omega-3 fatty acid. I actually do a vegan form myself. Mm -hmm. um, so for people who do not have fish or do not want fish because of mercury or concern for toxic effects, you could do the vegan. Probiotics need to be on mm -hmm. that list. Okay. In the brain health world, right, we want it to protect our gut health, right? You want to keep the inflammation down. You want to help support and nourish, you know. The hundred trillion bacteria, you know, fungus, you have all of these beneficial bacteria that are in your gut that are important in making neurotransmitters that are good for your brain. Um, but they're also very helpful, you know, to digest food. And we want to make sure we keep that strong because the foods that we're eating, pesticide laden foods, foods with 
additives and preservatives, um, they can damage the lining of our gut. So get a good probiotic in. So curcumin is another wonderful anti-inflammatory. The reason why I put it in is it crosses the blood brain barrier and can, it's a powerful antioxidant, but what I love about it is it can bind to beta amyloid plaques and the beta amyloid plaques are what build and they're the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. So by taking curcumin, um, you can gently start to chelate these out of the brain. So wow. I love everybody to do a, a curcumin. And then last but not least, vitamin D. Vitamin D, from a psychiatric perspective, low levels of vitamin D increase depression and Alzheimer's. So we see low levels of, of vitamin D in those um, disorders. So make sure you're getting enough vitamin D. We all learned about this during COVID, you know, it helps support healthy <laughs> immune system and we know it's good for our teeth and bones, but um, making sure that you have adequate amounts of vitamin D is important. And what we recommend, you know, every three to six months, you can get your labs done and just check and make sure your vitamin D levels are in an optimal range, which is usually for us between 60 to 80. Um, most people might think it's 30, but you need to really, if you're thinking about brain health, you want to optimize vitamin D. So those are the six that are basic. Anybody listening to this podcast can take. I do always recommend if you're on medications, you should talk to your physician because curcumin and omega-3 fatty acids thin the blood. So if you are on blood thinners, you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good recommendation. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate that. I think that is incredibly helpful uh, for everybody listening. Yeah. You're welcome. And then are there any other subsets of people where you might go beyond that? Yes. So in the book, I actually give three tiers of supplement recommendations. So, you know, having worked at a clinic where, you know, people walk in with any kind of psychiatric or neurological issue. I've had people come in with bags of supplements. I mean, they'll have 50 different supplements and, you know, I'm all about being efficient and making sure we get the things that you really need. You do not need to have extra. So in the book, um, I give two other tiers. So I have what I call an all-star tier. So if you really are engaged and want to take a little deeper dive. We get into the magnesium and the B complex and vitamin C. Like, so I give a few more tiers of supplement recommendations. And if you've had any type of brain injury or brain issue, I do have another tier in there that gets very specific on how to bring blood flow back to the brain and supplements that help really support blood flow, antioxidants, and boosting neurotransmitter function important to memory. So if you want to learn more about those, you can go to the book and we've, we've published on these in the peer reviewed literature. So that's why all of this is evidence-based. Thank you so Sweet. much for being here today. You're I welcome. really appreciate it. Yes. And wonderful. thank you for your great work too. Oh, thank you. I, I love appreciate it. it.